Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama. Welcome to our World of Paw series. Today we're discussing the Netflix trilogy series from DreamWorks, Tales of Arcadia. Yes, created by Guillermo del Toro, the series follows a large cast of heroes and villains in the small town of Arcadia as they battle for the fate of the Earth. Now this trilogy connects into one big story, starting with Troll Hunters, then Three Below, and finally Wizards. Yes! And before we start officially, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on notification bell to get updates on future podcasts and World of Pause videos. Absolutely. So, we started watching Troll Hunters around the time it first came on back in um, 2017, I believe. I think it's 2017 and 2018. Um, yeah, you're right. 2017. Right, right. That's okay. Correct. Okay. And we actually didn't know it was based off a book until very, very recently. Mm -hmm. And then we saw the book. I was like, we actually got the book and read it. And I, we can definitely say it is not almost nothing like the Netflix series. They, the DreamWorks version actually makes it more family friendly. As the book is supposed to be for kids. Mm -hmm. But they definitely get more gruesome with the trolls. Like, they're good trolls and bad trolls still. But they're all hideous looking. When they use the descriptions and the gum gums are more disgusting and volatile. Can't go into as much of the description because of YouTube, but just know that it's not the family friendly version you see here. And after reading the book, after Rascal read it, if I had seen this version probably within the first few episodes, I don't think I would continue with the series. Mm -hmm. But they really did a great adaptation. That, as you said, not only made it family friendly, but made you love all the characters and made it fun and enjoyable. And without them having done those things, it would not have been as fun for viewing. Now, the book itself, reading the book, it's a good read. Mm -hmm. It's just as you as you said, it's just not what you're expecting. It's a good read, but this particular version, the book version, does not make for great viewing. And yes, so for Troll Hunters, we said it's more family friendly, while the book is more grim and more of a grim, more like Stranger Things, mm -hmm. which ironically Netflix knows this version is like Stranger Things as well. Yes. But for here, we have the story for Troll Hunters, which they do keep majority of from the novel itself, is that Jim Lake Jr. is chosen by the mystical amulet to be a troll hunter who's supposed to be protectors of troll market and the good trolls of the world mm -hmm. and defend them and the world from the evil trolls which are known as the gum gums and to defeat gunmar yes and as you all know the original gem in troll hunter series up until the end was voiced by anton yelchin before his unfortunate demise um in an accident with a vehicle. Yes. But he was fantastic as Jim. Right. He really just brought this character to life, and you really love Jim, and you love Toby, mm -hmm. you love Claire, mm -hmm. you love the trolls that he deals with. Mm -hmm. It's just one fantastic story. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic journey. Right. And then you even end up liking Steve and Pepper Jack. Yeah. And... The story itself, I, I think for me, the best part of this series is that before they started doing the Voltron thing, where it's 13 episodes, but they break into two and claim it's two different ones, Troll Hunters gave us extremely long seasons, which was yes. fantastic, and complete stories got to be told. Right. And on the description, it always says part one, part two, but they were more like part two, one half, part two, one half, and what so, so forth. You would get the entire thing in one go. And it would still be a cliffhanger for something to come. Now, when it did get towards the end, the count started to get a little smaller. But you knew you, there wasn't some part missing. It was just getting towards the end. They say, this section should be told. Right. So you didn't feel like you were missing out or you're stretching out an already long story. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have that feeling we were doing that. And you must say also, this along with Voltron brought back action cartoons. Yes. Because people said there was a disappearance of them on TV because, according to executives at these animation companies, kids don't want to see action because they have video games. They want comedy and relief from playing the action by watching things like Teen Titans Go and Thundercats Roar and things that just are 
mindless so they can relax. I don't know what kids they've been talking to. I don't know. <laughs> so that's apparently why we haven't been getting a lot of action-oriented cartoons and reboots. But thanks to Netflix, uh, the start with Voltron the Jedi Defender and the Troll Hunter series mm -hmm. brought back a whole line of more uh, mature cartoons again. So mm -hmm. now more people can get into these types of shows again. And you gotta say, with Troll Hunters, they really succeeded in being a really fun, family-friendly series. They still did get dark as it went onward, mm -hmm. because they had to deal with the dark trolls, and as it went on, the threat got more and more serious. You had to deal with Morgana eventually, and the, the threat of Arcadia being taken over by an evil sorceress. So, yes, eventually it did get darker like the book, but it wasn't on the level of your kids shouldn't be seeing this. And eventually you got to introduce some more characters. And they even have this cool thing like they do with the MCU where they introduce characters from future series that are in the Arcadia City. Yes. They, they even have, they have two characters from Three Below and Wizard show up in here, but they don't have bigger roles until they get their own show. Mm -hmm. And you gotta say the story is very interesting from beginning to end. And uh, it's not like uh, The Flash where every person finds out. They just end up finding out, like, at the end, because you couldn't hide a sorceress coming out of the ground and a mortal army and stuff. There, there's, and then the trolls coming up, they couldn't hide that. So, at least it was more believable and why, like, okay, it's over. <laughs> right. I think, well, I want to stop saying I think, because you know it's me talking, and I say, I think. Another thing that was really fantastic about this is all three characters end up getting their spotlight. Mm -hmm. In Troll Hunters, it's Jim first, and then Claire, the second season. Mm -hmm. Toby plays a bigger part, but he gets a bigger part in Three Below, right. which we don't find until then. Right. So I think that's also a wonderful part of this. And I love how Jim's mom was involved in this, because in the book, it was his dad. Mm -hmm. And it was a much darker story, and the dad was really depressed because it was just a whole different story. Mm -hmm. I like the cheeriness of the story, the relationship he had with his mom, how he would cook for her, and, and mm -hmm. things of that nature. And we learn more about the not only the trolls, but the gum gums, and the changelings, right. and just the different types. Especially with the star cast, like it had Kelsey Grammer, Kelsey, I mean Clancy Brown, mm -hmm. It had Tom Kenny. Oh, yeah, Kelsey it had uh, Fred Ted Scorey. Lots of big stars in here. Yes. And one more thing we got to mention before going to Three Below, now we've covered the story and the actors, is that you've mentioned about Jim's original voice actor. Yes. Yes. Anton. Yes. And they actually did something that was actually very subtle. If you didn't read online what happened with, if you didn't read online what happened to him, they actually found a way to incorporate the new voice actor, Emil Hirsch, into the story. Mm -hmm. It seems like the original guy had done a majority of the show until it got to near the end of the final Like season. the last few yeah, episodes, right. literally. So until, like, by 95% of the story had been recorded with him. Mm -hmm. So they came up with an idea for the episode. And Jim had to take something that would increase his stamina. And it said, okay, when you take this, you have to inhale, give you strength of a troll. But it's going to also have some side effects that are permanent, like your voice changing and heightened sentences and things. Mm -hmm. And they say, what happened to your voice? Because mm -hmm. his voice actually gets changed when he transforms. And then mm -hmm. when he's back to normal, it's permanently changed like that. So it was a subtle way to change the way he spoke without being in your face like why is this such a difference so that was their way in universe of taking care of that right and anton again did a fantastic job of making you love this character mm -hmm. he was perfect for the role and emil did a great job of picking up the mantle and carrying it on right he just doesn't do the role as much as anton did right even when you get to three below and when you get to Wizards, mm -hmm. he's Same not thing. in here as much. Right. But Troll Hunters is fantastic. Awesome opening. Mm -hmm. Awesome theme. Awesome animation. Amazing characters. Mm -hmm. And of course, every time he changes, you think of Grayskull when he does his changing to the, uh, with the, not the amulet. The, yeah, it is oh, the yeah, amulet. Okay, with the amulet. Yeah, yeah. What does like, he say when he changes? It's a, for the it's a, for the glory of Merlin. Daylight is mine to command. Yes. It's like mine is the honor of Grey Skull too. <laughs> while you're at it. <laughs> so it's 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 a wonderful story, and 
the groundwork for it was from the book. Mm -hmm. So we're very grateful for the book. And mm -hmm. I'm very grateful that you got it from the library and we mm -hmm. actually read it. Because without that book, there would be no Troll Hunters at all. Right. So. so now we get into the sequel series, Three Below. Yes. And in here, you actually did see two of these characters show up towards the end of Troll Hunters as exchange students, I believe. Although yes. they, were, they were either exchange students or they were transfer students, one or the other. Cleb and Aja. Yes. And originally, you weren't really sure about them because they actually gave you hints on who they were at the end of Troll Hunters. You thought they were just kind of these weird characters that you had to get used to. Right. But they give you hints about them towards the end. Uh, that they think that they know who they are, but they don't. And then when they get to three below, it turns out they are actually royal aliens. Yes. And when you hear about the like the synopsis is, is here is that their plan is, take, is taken over by an evil, uh, might as well say dictator. Well, someone that was once their ally and then turned evil and wanted to take over the planet. Mm -hmm. King and queen stay on the planet to defend it, and then they sent their children to Earth. Along with, um, along with uh, the bodyguard, uh, what was his name? Uh, or Vatos Vex, yes. who loves his glorious <laughs> battles, and they're sent on Earth to be protected, uh, and be in disguise. And at first, we kind of thought it sounded too much like Symbionic Titan, because it was virtually the same story. But, yeah. as it went on, it did stand out on its own. It didn't just copy and paste Simon Kai on its own. It just had the similar concept, but everything else after it was still different. Yes, definitely. And when we first started watching it, but it was so different that we kind of were like, you know, I don't know how we're going to like this, blah, blah, blah. We ended up going back to the series once we learned that you have to watch all three parts to get to the movie that's coming out right in 2021 right and at first we were a little skeptical about it we weren't really sure to take it in because it was so vastly different mm -hmm. plus all three series have a different theme for the original it was the adventure heroic theme three below's theme is sci-fi pretty much mm -hmm. and here uh, it starts off a little rocky because you gotta get used to these new characters. They give you all the story and everything, and then they're in disguise. And the disguise they choose is actually brilliant because when they get there, their motherboard, mothership thing asks them, you know, what do they want to be in disguise? That will be the best thing to fit in. And the thing is that the computer only has enough information of Earth up to the 1950s. <laughs> so... Everything else has been outdated, so everything that they say and do and look like and the clothes is, they have is on. all out of date. The house, <laughs> everything they do and say is completely out of date because they don't know everything about Earth updated, so they all kind of stick out like being weird. And they have these two robots that are called Mom and Dad. Right, like Invader Zim. And then the, the robot names end up... Sounding like Ricky and Lucy, like the Lucy show from the right, 50s. right, right, right. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the reference. And then, oh, and then Tom Kenny voiced the dad robot. Yes. And, and what was funny is that the robots were just supposed to be the stand-ins for their parents because they have to ask where they are. But they're always haywire and acting wonky. Mm -hmm. But then they had an episode where the robot, the Tom Kenny robot, had an epiphany and one of them questioning his life's purpose. And they thought, okay, we messed them up even worse. And then they actually. We programmed them where they were healthy and actually had emotion and feelings. They weren't just doing things like because they were on autopilot. They were actually being self-aware, mm -hmm. but still acting like they were Ricky and Lucy. Yes. So they were <laughs> helping them on the missions, and they were they were their friends. Because when they got taken over, they said, you can't destroy them. They're our friends still. So I love that they were actually part of the story. Mm -hmm. And they got like pretty much everyone that was there was like a family. Yes. Everyone there you ended up liking, and everyone they befriended you ended up liking, liking too. And DJ Clef <laughs> and Aja, you didn't expect them to be characters that were this strong mm -hmm. and intelligent. Yes, we know the trope with the intelligent aliens, but mm -hmm. they were not only intelligent in knowledge from their planet, but they were eager and willing to learn everything they could about Earth. Right. Not only Earth's technology and customs and the culture and mm -hmm. the people, 
they really were immersing themselves and just wanted to get involved in everything. Right. And they had no perceived notions. They didn't come like some of the movies have where we are superior and no. blah, blah, blah. The most they there was said, none of that. Right. The most they said was like, it's a mud ball. That's yes. the most they said about Earth. What That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and then they saw all this cool stuff on Earth. And like they were into the music and the technology. They were like, oh, what is this? What is this? What is this? They were fascinated by pretty much everything that they had, mm-hmm. pretty much. And the only thing was that they had a running joke is that, oh, aliens are like, okay, that's an offensive term for them. <laughs> and and when they said, hey, can't you tell them to calm down? Don't you know them? And he said, okay, I seriously find it offensive and flattering that you think that we know every alien species <laughs> in the galaxy. <laughs> now, there's one great episode where Jim, Claire, and Toby appear in Three Below. And yes. it's the only one I'm going to tell you about without having any spoilers. Mm-hmm. And they have this wonderful interaction that has to be erased, and they won't remember. And they were so disappointed, they said, well, we won't be friends anymore. Right. But the best, one of the best parts is when Jim uh, uses the amulet to put on his armor, mm-hmm. and Clev and Audra are like, oh, I want one! <laughs> that was like the greatest part of that! <laughs> yes, that was probably one of the best episodes they had for this one. Yes. And we got to say that, the you know, it really had more of an edge towards action in here. Because they had a lot of comedy already. When they're when they're on Earth, it's just comedy all the time. Especially with Steve hitting on Aja all the time. Yes. And then her actually liking him back. Her her lumbering oaf. Yes. It was a compliment. Yes. <laughs> she fell for him. You're like, really? Like, you're like, oh he's my a, God. You're like are you really? sure? Like, are you sure? Yes. And when they had their uh, action parts, they had their action parts in here when it had to do with hiding from the, the ruler and, and we gotta say, it actually got pretty intense. You did kind of think of Zarkon a lot. That's pretty much, I think, where they got a lot of the inspiration for the character from. But he still stood out on his own with, with uh, being the antagonist. Because mm-hmm. at first you were thinking, okay, he's like this type of threat, but then he's gonna be goofy, which they kind of threw you off with. But no, he's like pretty much deadly the entire time. Yes. And as it got further in, they have more enemies. They have more like mercenaries that they sent after them, which was like Symbonic Titan. They had enemies on Earth that were, of course, the government part of it with the AR-51 knockoff taking alien artifacts and using them for their own purposes. Mm -hmm. Then you had the Brotherhood coming down and hunting them too, which ended up being its own arc. It ended up having a lot more darker elements towards the end because while you were still laughing at the phone part they had on Earth, you still were reminded that this isn't permanent, that... Their lives are still in danger, and like every episode, they were still fighting for their lives. Yes. It was exciting, just as exciting as Troll Hunters in a different way. Mm-hmm. And then you learn their connection to the first series, mm-hmm. and then it progresses to the third series, right. Wizards. And the character that's the main character in Wizards appears at the end of. Three Below in part two, Mm -hmm. or season two, he appears in the last few episodes. Right. And he looks a lot like Jim. At first, we're like, why does he look so much like Jim? Why? And then we learn later why. Why? And so, yeah, yes, the third part of the trilogy is Wizards, Mm -hmm. which this one keeps a more fantasy theme. The downside, the two downsides for this series, unfortunately, is that it's now a limited series. It doesn't get multiple parts like the first two. Mm-hmm. It only gets ten episodes to tell a story. And then there wasn't as much of an epic intro as it was the first two. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even really animated. They kind of just had some pictures there. And unfortunately, the t- the self... Um, we don't know if Netflix has the limit or they made the limit on their own thought they could do it all. But it's perhaps maybe Netflix because Voltron had the same issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, it only had 10 episodes to tell a story, but you could tell throughout the episodes there was more to tell and longer things. There was a point where they were thrown back in time to the medieval times, to the time of King Arthur mm-hmm. and Merlin and Morgana before she turned evil. And you could tell there was more story to be told there, Definitely. but when it got halfway through, they started hurrying things up. There were things that you knew needed more development, needed more screen, characters needed more screen time, arcs that needed to be fleshed out more, and Mm -hmm. unfortunately they had to end it all much sooner than they expected. 
And in this time around, like the first, the three below, when Toby had a much, Toby, Steve, and Eli had a bigger role to play with helping the aliens. Uh, in this one, they had Steve in here, and, and they had Claire. Steve gets to, the only part we're going to say, Steve gets to become a knight. Right. And he meets a knight that looks exactly like him. If he were like, older. Oh, you're so handsome. <laughs> <laughs> like, of course, that's who you go with. <laughs> and... And for in here, uh, like we said, it's a kind of a faster paced, faster paced in here, mm -hmm. and you can tell that the direction of it sort of shifted. It's supposed to be the Wizard series, and it, it was. It was uh, there were two things also missing. One was that DJ Club, who we keep calling because that's what we call him now. Well, because he ends up his his. New earthly passion is to be a DJ. Right. And, and then he got him Toby's movie. And he gets him getting his opportunity, too. So now he's DJ Club. Right. That's all we call him now. <laughs> <laughs> um, for here, what they have for Three Below is that Toby, Steve, and Eli were involved in the story. But for Wizards, it seemed like DJ Club was not really involved in the Wizards story until the very end. Mm -hmm. So it looks like that part was also cut short in his involvement, which you thought was going to be sort of like the fish out of water thing with an alien being in medieval times, but it looks like they did not go there. Right. And this one was about, um, who they call, they call the guy Douche, what's his name? Deucey. 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 I almost called him something else. <laughs> it's Deucey, and it's spelled like Deucey, but it's like in French spelling. You're right, it's like, you pronounce this <laughs> every day? Yeah, <laughs> Deucey, who sounds like, or when he turns out, you know, he's like, what, 400 years old or more? Mm -hmm. It's like, he's like Jacques Rostel. No wonder he sounds like he's like 50 years old. He's been sweeping for 400 years. It's like, yes. he needs a new job. But you find out why he's been doing mm -hmm. that. And he's supposed to be the apprentice to Merlin. Yes. Merlin. And you met Merlin starting in Troll Hunters. Right. And in Troll Hunters, you think that he's just a mean jerk. And by the end of this trilogy, you really learn more about Merlin, and you learn that Merlin isn't a bad guy. Right. That's all we'll say. And you also get the backstories of Blinky and Arg mm -hmm. and how Morgana turned evil. Mm -hmm. And you also find out how the amulet was created in the first place. And they, the attempt here, at first they weren't trying to change anything, but then they realized they thought, hey, maybe if we change this, all the crap that happened in the other two series won't happen. But you knew they couldn't really do that because then there'd be no show. The whole trilogy would be null and void already. Right. But they did have a really good attempt with, you know, kind of changing the perspective. Like, you know, King Arthur was good, Morgana was evil, but they end up pretty much playing with that in here by seeing the backstory so you kind of wonder with the question who's really the bad guy in here mm -hmm. and it ends up being a little different than what they end up in the final product with troll hunters right and then of course you know what happened with troll hunters with jim turning into a troll and no one really liked that and in the third part you find out the Final results of what happens without right, spoiling it. Right, right. People really did not like that. We could understand because the thing was for troll hunters was that it was stood out because Jim wasn't a troll. He was the first human troll hunter, right. and it picked him one of the reasons because he wasn't a troll. There was an advantage to it. Then Merlin decided at the end, okay, you're not strong enough as you are. You need to be a troll, and then he becomes a troll at the end, which was really backwards considering what was the whole reason of becoming one anyway. Right. But they do fix it with this, but we won't reveal how. Right. And so, if you have not seen any of these series, you really should go on Netflix and watch them before the movie comes out in 2021. Yes. It's a fun, fantastic, adventurous, dramatic, action-filled ride that you will love. And it brings to mind, um, really it brings to mind watching anime when you watch these series. Mm -hmm. In terms of the writing, the animation being really great, the storylines, the well-developed characters, and the likability of the characters. I mean, you can't help liking these characters all of them right in every series and that's really a feat for any writer to keep writing characters that the audience falls in love with you fall in love with all the characters in troll hunters you fall in love with the characters in three below mm -hmm. and you fall in love with the character i should say the main characters the mcs in uh wizards as well right so if you haven't watched it go to netflix it's still on since it's a netflix original series um they will all still be on
If you have seen it, let us know what you think in the comments below. Was one part of the trilogy your favorite? Who was your favorite character? Are you looking forward to seeing the movie as we are that will tie up all of the loose ends and give us the final story arc in 2021? Let right. us know in the comments below. And be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get updates on future podcasts and more pause videos. Absolutely. So, thank you so much for watching. And join us in 2021 when we do the final coverage with the final movie. We're yeah. looking forward to it. Yes. I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a tuntastic day. Peace. And the water sitting, flashing lights. Trying to walk around, man, who the hell are you? What you want to do? My man, is on you. My dreams, she was my queen. A castle in the mountaintops, rivers and streams.